hi friends today i want to talk with you about what are the three biggest problems the small business sellers uh, including gas stations liquor stores or grocery markets or restaurant so those sellers have three biggest problem which they get when they sell their businesses one of the biggest problem it's the reasonableness of your price because because one of the most important thing whenever you go to buy anything in the market first you see okay means what's the price of that particular item or that particular product so that's one of the biggest factor which can attract or distract a buyer so same thing applies to the market of where the small business is being sold so the buyers is looking uh, all those markets and looking all the other businesses and they are evaluating your price and uh, and other factors which are sometimes secondary um, so you have to be really very careful when you set your prices you should not be unreasonable because sometimes what happens the seller if they are Uh, selling their business through uh, a broker representation uh, they just put the listing on there or if sometime if they are just representing themselves uh, they just put the listing at some website and uh, and they hope that okay means it will sit there and and you will put some unreasonable price you will think maybe there is some person uh, who may be come uh in the influence probably it should not be like that but sure means you hope okay some person will come in influence of this business and he will think oh sure mean this business is double of its price but that that only happens i think in your dreams that doesn't happen in reality so you have to be be really careful when you set your business price and put on the market even if you are not spending any time on advertising it or if your broker is advertising because in the normal process you give to your broker and you hope okay broker will advertise i owe nothing to the broker until the business is sold uh, so it doesn't matter to me even if this business doesn't get uh, sold uh so let's put a high price because there is nothing to lose on uh, on the seller side um but sorry to say that uh, that's one of the biggest mistake you are doing why because when you put your business on the market if you have an unreasonable price and the buyers are looking at your business so first of all they will think okay means this this buyer sorry the seller is not serious enough because on your price alone they can just evaluate what kind of attitude the seller will have in regards to the sale of the business so and also the you are sending a message to the market that okay i am not a serious enough person so so the more you will put your business on the market with unreasonable price the more that will hurt Uh, the reputation of your whole business because uh, because as over time the buyers look your business and they see okay this business have been for market for for like 6 months or 8 months or 1 year of time so that that impacts their judgment if even they like that business so when they are evaluating to put an offer after 1 year sure means that thing they will consider in all other factors uh, they would be evaluating and probably you will be getting a lower price offer so you have to really understand be reasonable in your price be competitive in your price whenever you are putting your business for sale on the market uh, to to save the reputation of your business and also to show the market that you are serious enough and committed enough to sell your business if if an appropriate reasonable offer comes in and the second biggest problem 
it's the lack of documentation or not providing or cooperating with your broker to pro to provide him with enough documents where he can show the other buyers the value of the business because you have to understand it's uh, whenever you are selling your business what you are basically selling you are uh, basically selling most of the price which is allocated to it's your goodwill that's the reputation of your business the the whole opportunity which you have generated to generate a particular amount of profit and how much that opportunity costs or how much is that value of that opportunity so you are providing basically to the buyer uh, this kind of um, opportunity value and also uh, other secondary things are also included in business which includes furniture fixtures and also uh, your other equipments which you yourself own or if you are leasing it uh, so those kind of things including your ABC licenses but those are much more secondary things because the main thing will come about on your goodwill of your business because that's the that's the main value item in the whole price of your business so you have to really keep in your mind that that's the thing you are transferring and so if a buyer want to know how much the goodwill of this business is so from where from where they would be able to know from your documents your sale documents your tax return from your profit and loss statement from your balance sheet uh, mostly for for small businesses of uh, like mom and pop businesses including restaurants gas stations grocery markets or other convenience stores so most of the time people look towards the profit and loss statement because balance sheet there is not not much change or not much fluctuation as it goes to the other big businesses so so the main focus is on the profit and loss statement most of the time so but if you are not even providing at least three years of profit and loss statement to your broker or if you are representing yourself in the sale uh, to the buyer then sorry to say that uh, then you are showing that that you are not serious enough and that affects the value of your business because the buyer then gets suspicious that okay means this person is not showing me all the documentation so maybe it's not appropriate to believe this person what they are stating in their particular ad uh, in their particular listing they are putting on the websites because in the website mostly you you represent uh, you provide information to your broker that okay I am doing on an average sixty thousand dollar per month gross sales and this much is my profit but if you are not providing documents to back it up then you are showing your lack of seriousness and that itself affect your wholesale process and also the offer which you will get in the market if you get any because sometimes you will not be able to get any offers even even within six eight months of time and then you blame your broker or or then you blame yourself okay means why my business is not selling so you have to line up all the documentation of your business at least three years of your profit and profits and loss statement and and also it would be good if you can provide uh, your tax return um, and, and and also means here we are saying providing to a qualified buyer we are not saying just uh, whoever person inquires about your business you should just give your documents to them yeah you can have the uh, not non-disclosure agreements that's the normal process which professional brokers use and uh, but you should be ready with your documents because that's really very very crucial and the third thing which I want to discuss, it's uh, the defect in your lease agreements or with uh, your relationship with your landlords. Because one of the main, I will say, I can give the title of a blood <laughs> bloodline because one because because the lease you can consider it as the blood of your business because most of the businesses are on lease and they are selling their business opportunity 
and what include in that business opportunity as i just mentioned it's your goodwill it's your equipment for nature fixture because most of the business transaction doesn't in, involve the commercial real estate in that and and you are just leasing uh, the space from some shopping center or some standalone building so so that's the lease is blood of your business so when you are selling your business so you are sure means uh, you are transferring that lease assigning or subleasing uh, the existing lease to the uh, to the new owners uh, which you can also call as buyer but if you don't have a good relation with your landlord it it would not be good for your landlord to just stuck on your lease even even if you can read your lease they should provide you the assignment but still means you should have good relationship with your landlord because because they are the approval authority uh, yeah they also have to be reasonable when they are declining it or what are the reasons but still means going through all that you can understand all that legal process or those kind of thing it would be difficult so so i will just request you have good relation with your landlord because when you are selling that's really very crucial sometimes also there is a problem you have some kind of legal issues with your lease when you yourself have bought this business suppose 5 10 years ago you have actually not seen the lease you don't actually know your terms because most of the time in our practice we used to see that that seller don't have any any idea about their term they only know basics about okay this much is my rent and 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 this much is my cam other than that most of the time they don't have an idea means what's going on with the lease because when it comes to the sale of your lease then you realize there are some terms or some restrictions about your business which will hurt the value of your business because as you know restriction always hurts the value of anything including real property or even if it's your business because it's it's providing a, it's disallowing you the access to certain things which you would be able to do or expand your business so you have to really understand that when you yourself are buying the business so that's also applies to the buyers so buyers should really read their lease before they enter into this lease uh, and also just get a draft before you sign and just read it uh, maybe if you have to spend couple of days it's really important you should read it and if you don't understand that yeah means if this is a complicated lease you should just ha- get help of a legal professional a licensed attorney in your state so so it gets really important when you are doing the sale transactions the new things don't come up or 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 you should not put some kind of an ad which you uh, you later come to know that okay this lease doesn't approve this particular thing and you're just sale stuck in the middle and buyer and seller is just staring at each other like what's going on now what we should do so you should not just put yourself in in such kind of uh, situations so those are the three most um, most biggest hurdle which uh, which i able to see in the practice of sale of businesses uh, so for any future tips or videos regarding the sale of businesses or transaction or about real property um, so you can if you have any suggestion you can just send me an email uh, the email is at below the description and also if you uh, if you like this video you can just click on like button if you want to subscribe for the channel for to get the notification for future videos so you can click on subscribe button uh, or you can just send me email for any suggestion regarding the future videos or what improvement i can do uh, on this particular video blog so thanks for your time and see you with the new video in future